Hi, this is uh, Franny Drummond from Drummond Custom Airbrush. Um, we are doing another video for HockeyUs.com. Um, what we're going to do here is um, the art of stenciling. Uh, stenciling is uh, definitely easier, but also tricky. Um, a lot of times with this, we have to... Um, this particular one, we actually had to hand cut the horse um, to make it fit. Basically, with, with doing this is we take a, a drawing like we have, which is Skidmore, and it's their horse, and we'll actually take this, copy it onto a stencil, transfer it down, which I'll show you, take it like this, and we're using transfer paper and stencil material. So what we'll do is we'll actually trace this out onto the printed copy of the horse and what happens is the transfer will the pencil will actually push down and transfer the horse onto the stencil like so and then you just trace the whole entire horse out and then what we'll do is come in with our knife and hand cut the horse out by tracing The lines with the exacto, um, and then you can pull it back. That's one way of doing it. That's what I had to do on this particular um, helmet here because of all the harsh lines. And this one here, I have a computer. A lot of guys use a computer, they'll actually take this image, scan it, and cut it out on a computer. That's another way of doing it. I chose to do it this way just because of all the harsh lines that we had on this and a lot of the holes and imperfections in the helmet. That's where you run into stencil problems. If we were to actually tape this out, draw it, um, and then hand cut it out onto the helmet, sometimes I don't like to do that because of the cut marks in the helmet. Just in case I have to maneuver something, I'll have lines or cut marks in the helmet, which give or take, um, you don't want a lot of. Um, this way I just chose to do it, um, and I actually cut everything out to um, basically fit within the lines of the helmet if you can kind of see that and then we did it on this side too so we're ready to tape it out and work the stencil in so what we're going to do now is just we have everything masked out taped out i basically put the stencil on so i'll show you real quick say so this is the stencil we actually took it and just taped it like a hinge on top and got it to a placement of where we wanted it and then we flipped it up and pulled the bottom paper out which is like a transfer like a clear transfer and then what it is is just like a sticker and it sticks onto the helmet we did it that way it's easier that way a lot of guys like to use tape tape the helmet out and then transfer it and cut it out on the helmet but we chose this way it's one way of doing it there's a couple different ways now since we went through all that we'll actually go ahead and airbrush around um, all the green and uh, we're actually going to put yellow which is the color of the horse as you can see the horse there has the yellow outline which is all the green is open which we're going to spray in yellow and then we'll pull the masking off and you'll get to see what the horse looks like this is just like a, a, a technique of stenciling that you can use for helmets um, which is makes it easier than trying to freehand it because when you're freehanding it you're actually it gets really really fuzzy and the logo um, will look fuzzy so what we're going to do is we're going to airbrush the yellow on there now I'm not really using a ton of air when I'm airbrushing just enough to just get the paint to flow out real nice and cover it's a lighter color so you might have to go over it a couple times because you're going over a dark Base. But this is one of the cool effects that a lot of helmets and logos are very sharp. So you want to be able to use the stencil to make everything nice and clean when you look with the logo. But we're just going to kind of airbrush just inside your green areas. And you can see I'm kind of going over it a couple times here to get a good look at uh, 
the color flowing out of the airbrush. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it's covering. And yellow doesn't cover that great, so you have to go over it a couple of times. A lot of times you use white, um, but I thickened up the yellow a little bit to try to cover over the green as much as possible. And you just basically want to go over everything coverage wise, make sure it looks like it's covered. So that way when you pull the stencil off it's really hard to really apply it back on and get it lined up in the same exact spot. So you want to make sure you go over the whole entire thing and make sure it's good, double check yourself because you don't want to really have to go back in and try to reapply that stencil in that same exact spot. You can do it, but it's a little tricky. So we're just kind of get this paint in here. There's really not too much to this other than just spraying it in. You're not really using any kind of freehand techniques or anything. You're just kind of just painting in a if you don't have an airbrush or a little mini gun, you can use a little mini gun if you want. Makes it easier, covers quicker. We just chose to do the airbrush, kind of keep the overspray down. Just fill in the eye. A lot of people now are using a lot of stencil work, letting the computer kind of do its stuff. Um, the only time you can't do that is when you start getting into like really, really crazy detail with. Uh, airbrushing and, and doing like portraits or faces or the stencils won't really help you out that way. And you kind of come out with, the, if you don't have a computer, that's why I'm showing you this way, because if you don't have a computer and the program to run and cut um, the, the you know your stencil, this is a good way to do it yourself. You can buy stencil material anyway. They make frisket or um, any any of that kind of stuff. You can kind of do it yourself if you don't have it access to the computer. Because some of them programs get a little expensive. But if you're going to do it for a living, it's it's definitely a beneficial way to cut your stencils out because the computer's kind of doing it for you. But before I had a computer, I kind of had to do it this way. You can kind of see, I'm just painting it in. And you really want to cover the yellow because yellow is not the greatest color to cover. So I'm kind of going back over it. And with this paint it dries pretty quick. Um, but I thickened it up so it might dry a little bit less because you know I'm kind of going over it again. Um, I always take a blow dryer or whatever. A heat gun might be a little bit too much because you know you don't want to really melt the helmet. I just use, I prefer a blow dryer to kind of dry the paint for me so I can pull the stencil off, which I'll show you in a couple minutes here. Just want to make sure I'm covered, like I said. Make sure all of it's got the yellow in there. And when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's always really important to wear a mask. We're just, we have low pressure right now, so we're kind of keeping it where, you know, we can get the, the camera to kind of pick up what we're doing but it's really important to wear a mask when you're doing this it's a little hard to talk to you when I'm wearing a mask so we're pretty much covered here for the yellow kind of how I did the kind of how I did the bottom lettering kind of it's covered you, you, you'll know if you can see the green through it but like I said yellow is kind of tough to to paint Anything like white or whatever, blue, anything close to that color green will cover quick. So you won't need as many coats. So we're about there. What I'll do next is just, like I said, I'll blow dry. Hopefully that won't screw up. And all this is basically doing, all this is basically doing is just kind of drying it so I can pull the stencil off and not touch it or have to worry about it. Because we're using base coats and base coats will dry quick. So what now I'm going to do is pull, it's pretty much dry, it's a little tacky but we can get away with it. I'm going to pull off the stencil or my masking around the outside. you got to be careful. 
I still try to be aware of not touching the actual paint yet until um, I'm done. But another technique I'm going to show you real quick is I think we used it on the other video that we did is airbrushing just the edge of the the horse which this happens sometimes you gotta you just gotta watch when you pull up your uh, your stencil that you don't pull off the whole entire stencil like I just did but you can reapply it back down like this here we're just kind of going back in and and you know putting it back down Okay. I want to use this white border to airbrush around the edge of it to give us another effect of um, a subtlety. So when the when the customer or this college kid sees the the mask, he'll see just that kind of like ghost image of a horse or a border around the actual horse itself. Kind of gives it another cool effect. There's so many little things that you can do when you're doing this to like you know, add a little bit pizzazz. A lot of guys do shadows or highlights or whatever. Um, we were specifically told that um, the goalie is not a real flashy kid and he just wants to kind of keep it uh, simple and clean is what we were told and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to go too crazy with all the effects. We just want to kind of keep it super clean. The only thing we added was, I don't know if you can pick it up from the camera, is we did a hunter green with a little bit of sparkle to the top of it, which is just a pearl, which has a cool effect to it. Once we clear this thing, it should add a really nice effect. Alright, so what I'm going to do is add black. And I'm going to use black because it's a, you know, he's got, they do have black in their logos and stuff like that, so what we're going to do is just add black to the to the helmet and we're just going to airbrush around the edge like a shadow okay now what we're going to do is i got black in the airbrush and we're just going to hit the edge of you got to be real careful with this because you got to be kind of close to the edge of the stencil you really don't want to hit inside the yellow so I'm just kind of going on the edge of it I'll try it on this side so you can kind of see in the light see I'm just kind of hitting the edge of it what that's going to do is when I pull this off all the white stencil is actually going to stay green which is going to give a nice cool effect where it just adds a little bit more dimension to it um, but you got to be really careful. Like if this yellow was a little drier, we can actually put tape on that and back tape it so we know that we're not going to touch the the yellow at all. But just from experience, you, you kind of get used to using the airbrush or whatever you're going to do. And you know you know how to work it. So we're, we're kind of going back in and just shadowing around the horse like so okay we finished the outline with the black that we were doing airbrushing the edge now what we're gonna do is pull off our stencil and see what we got and you can kind of see what we got and like I told you before the white would be green you're just basically masking off the green any kind of imperfections or whatever they'll either wipe off or you can just go back in with the green and touch it up. So you're always going to have a blowout or something. When you deal with stencils, you might think that you got everything, but you know, you'll know you miss spots, believe me. But now you can kind of see what I meant about the, the black being around the edge. kind of gives it a pop, especially when you clear it. It will really jump off the, the mask. And the green is just basically the the same green that's the helmet is. So, but there's different effects with masking. That's why I showed you this way because a lot of people don't have the capability of having the computer with the the vinyl masking or whatever. Um, you can you can really do a lot with it. 
a lot of guys uh, in an NHL now um, all have the logos and everything on file and they'll just cut the logos right out and there you go you got your horse just makes stencil makes everything so much cleaner if you were to try to airbrush this the horse uh, you never have it perfect because of the you know the sharpness of the stencil there is ways to use stencil when you need to and then there's ways that you know sometimes it's too much on a helmet everybody you know thinks they're a painter and they can stencil everything but it, it just really makes it too simple simple is good believe me in hockey but you also want to be able to learn different techniques so you can use stencil plus freehand airbrushing like you can make this a realistic course if you wanted to but that's basically the the idea around stenciling for this episode here.